Hey everybody, this is Aaron Harris, host of the Football Odyssey, and today I want to talk to you about Anchor. If you haven't heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. Let me explain. First of all, it's free. And there are creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone and computer. Anchor will distribute your podcast for you so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more. And you can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. So go and download the free Anchor app or go to Anchor FM to get started. This podcast is part of the Sports History Network, your headquarters for the yesteryear of your favorite sport. You can learn more at sportshistorynetwork.com. What's going on, everyone? This is Aaron Harris, and you are listening to the Football Odyssey. On today's show, I'm pleased to be joined by Phil Villapiano, the former Pro Bowl linebacker who played for the Oakland Raiders from 1971 to 1979. In this interview, Phil and I discuss various memories from his iconic days with the Silver and Black, including his relationship with head coach John Madden, the infamous Immaculate Reception play, what made the NFL so iconic in the 1970s, and Phil goes on to share an interesting story at the end of the show about his Super Bowl ring that you don't want to miss. I'm sure many of you who grew up in the 1970s will appreciate hearing from Phil, whose aggressive style of play made him stand out on a Raiders team that had hard hitters at every level of the defense. As you'll hear, Phil's a fun-loving guy and has a lot of personality and a lot of great stories. So if you like the conversation, feel free to subscribe and share. Without further ado, I bring you number 41, Phil Villapiano. Welcome to the show, Phil. How are you this evening? Yeah, I'm good, man. All good. Uh, just uh, getting ready for a huge weekend. No more football, though. I don't, I don't know what I'm going to do without football. But we will be playing golf on uh, tomorrow. And then Sunday, the... I got to go to Dallas. Monday in Dallas. Tuesday, I come back. Wednesday, I'm going to Maui for my birthday. So life is pretty good, Aaron. Yeah. Yeah, it's living the life. I'm I'm glad you took the time to come on here for two reasons. Number one, because you were such a big part of the iconic Raiders teams of the 70s. But two, I was in high school when my parents got NFL Network, and I used to see you on there all the time, especially for the top 10 interviews. So I think it's ironic and cool that you got that I'm able to interview you now 10 years later. Yeah, pretty cool. You know, uh, NFL, what a channel that's turned out to be. I, I, I remember... Go, you know, going there, and I used to wear tie and jacket, and everything was prim and proper. And you know, and, and Mr. Zabel was alive, Ed Zabel, the father, right? Yeah, and everything was, you know, you wore a tie and jacket. Then his son Steve took over, which exploded the thing, but it, got, it all got to be fun. And yeah, they invited me down there a million times. Matter of fact, I got their award a couple of years ago, they actually brought me down here, you know. NFL channel and NFL films, they don't pay you. Right. You know, that's, it, it's a pain in the butt, but you do it because I'm in sales and it's always nice. You're sitting in a restaurant. I got, you know, the, you know, sports station on and there, there you are, you know, and uh, it, it, it always, it's really good to, and Ben Davidson taught me that to fill all publicity is good publicity. So I listened to Ben. I did a lot of, I did a lot of those things, but, they they actually give out an award every once in a while. And uh, I think it was like, a, it must have been right before COVID. They gave me a beautiful trophy, Steve Sable Award for, uh, you know, helping out, you know, and uh, it was very nice. So, yeah, I'm on TV a lot down there. Matter of fact, I don't know if you saw the one they did during COVID when it came to my house. and I did. I didn't know what, I mean, what are we going to talk about? You never even told me, you know, told me, let's talk about you. Are we going to talk about Vegas? We were just looking for something. Yeah. Were you and, uh, yeah, Steve, were, were you and Steve pretty good friends? Yeah. 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 We, we were, you know, his dad was the Al Davis age and mm -hmm. Steve was my friend. Yeah. Yeah. So we got to be good. And, you know, he would, 
it was always in that nice conversations, you know, I felt who would be good in this, you know, and I give them a guy's name, you know, then they, then they go find him. Yeah. So, you're like, a, you're like a producer. Well, yeah. Well, I don't know, <laughs> yeah. but they never paid me. Like there's a group down there that, you know, that one time I went down there on a Friday and I remember Jaworski and a couple other guys were sitting in a room and I'm like, what are you guys doing here? Right. Well, the, you know, we actually do a show for them, you know, and they, they have like an hour show or something where they talk football, but they get paid. You got to get it. You got to get, you got to get in Ron Jaworski's circle. Yeah. Those are the big yeah. books. Yeah. So football has been a big part of your life ever since you were a young boy. Uh, I've heard you mention in the past that your mother was actually the one that told you you could do this for a living. Um, and that kind of, you know, molded you throughout your upbringing and your childhood to work towards that moment. Now, most young men, when they want to be a pro football player, they always want to be the quarterback or the running back. Did you always want to grow up just knocking people out as a linebacker? Well, yeah. And, and, and I like to tackle and, it, and, and I used to really, really, um, work on tackling. And even when I was a young kid, and we, we we played in the parks every day. We played football, and I would try and cut the legs out from somebody to make them flip, you know. And everybody would be, ah, you know, they get mad at you because it, you know we're young kids. But I would, I would do that. I would, you know, in the neck with my arm. I I did a lot of stuff, but I always enjoyed tackling. And I remember uh, my junior year at Bowling Green, the we, as our own defense, our coach, Don Nalen, who went on for all those years at West Virginia, the great teams, it, it, the guy just didn't get it. It, it, it. We scrimmaged so much. We knocked out all of our own running backs. I remember my junior year. I mean, I'm ready to be, you know, something really good uh, at defense. You know, we played a 5-3, so it was kind of like a, three, four in the pros. I was playing on the left side and he said, Phil, we don't have any runners. <laughs> and we know you ran in high school. How about you becoming a running back? So I opened up against Utah State as a as offensive running back. Well that only lasted one game, maybe one and a half. <laughs> and then some guys got healthy and I went back to defense, thank God, or I would have never played in the pros. You know, and so I always I always liked it and the the beauty of unlike Bowling Green when you it's a five three remember they called it the Oklahoma right. two linebackers in the middle it's really a three four but the guys blitzed you know and they didn't cover so I, I I got into the pros and that's the first time I had to cover anybody and it, there's a lot of technique in that but in the pros the linebackers get to make a lot of calls. You kind of control what's going on over there on your side of the line. And I really enjoy that where you're a little more important. <laughs> you know, yeah. You're not just a pass rusher, you know? So I, I really enjoyed it. You know, the coverages and, 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 you know, defensive backs and you work together, the zones you, you worked and then, you know, the pros and uh, being a linebacker in the pros, there's, there's a lot of responsibility, which is, you know, mental, and I always enjoyed being, you know, playing physical, but also the mental, I, I really enjoyed too. And then, and I got that, I got it both when I became a linebacker, which, which I was going to be, you know, with yeah. pros. When you got to Oakland, you originally started off in a 4-3. Is that right? Yeah, we did. And, um, yeah, so the strong side linebacker, which I played the left side, you got right up on the tight end. But – you, if he, he released outside, you would cover him. If he released inside, you would cover the running back. So the two outside guys, even though it's a 4-3, the four down guys went, unless yeah. we called the stunt. But the two outside linebackers had to cover. So, gotcha. Yeah, that's right. That's when I learned to cover. And I, I, I left because uh, my linebacker coach was Ray Malavesi. And I don't know if you remember Ray. He went on to coach the Rams and brought him the Super Bowl. And uh, Ray's a great guy, but Al Davis hired him to be a linebacker coach, and he played offensive center and guard. 
<laughs> what did he know about being a pro linebacker? Sure. He taught me nothing. Yeah. <laughs> but he liked me. So I, yeah. I, I, luckily I got in with Dan Connors and Gus Otto. Those, those were my two other linebackers. And they taught me all I needed to know about the technique. And especially Dan Connors, a beautiful guy. Yeah. And uh, I was like his student. <laughs> yeah. I didn't know what to do. I mean, right. And, and Ray didn't know what to do. So it, it was cool. And it probably took me a little longer to, to know what I was doing out there. But that was okay because Al Davis just and John Madden, it felt we, we brought you here to make tackles. Don't worry yeah. about anything else. So that was kind of good for me. What was it like when you first got to the Raiders training camp? I mean, did you immediately kind of feel right in place with the rest of your teammates and build that camaraderie, or did it take some time to kind of feel each other out? Uh, in, in, in the pros, it's, it's definitely not – you don't walk in and, and be comfortable. you got to earn the right to be comfortable. And, and, you know, I just knew that, and you, you just know, you know, because, I mean, here was Pete Bonacek, was number 40 and I'm 41 and they gave me 41. I'm like, what do you want me to be a safety man? You know, why am I 41? I might be a 50 or 60. Right now I, I was 41. So I get placed right next to Pete Banizak and he was next to me and Kenny stay with the, the, this line over here about number 12 was right across from me and Pete. So Kenny and Pete, they became my buddies every morning. They would say, what'd you do last night? Ginzo? What'd you do? <laughs> they wanted they wanted good smut stories. So we but anyway, I, I got to know some of the guys. And the soon as I started playing, I became a starter in the, right from the start. And uh, once you start making plays and the guys see that you could play football, then they welcome you. But um I you know, I tell a story many times with John Madden. If he said ten words to me my rookie year, that was a lot, you know. And it, Really? You just had to earn. You had to earn that right to talk to the to the big guy. Do you remember your first interaction with him? Yeah, I do. I, I, well, it, this night, you know, naturally this wasn't my first, but it's the first one that I really remember because he might have said good game, or he might have said something to me. Yeah. But we were playing Denver, and I think I think it was in my second year. And, you know, if you remember John on the sideline, he was out of control. He was, yeah. he was, he was so animated and he was just wild. So he, here, Craig Morton, I think was Morton or whatever, whoever the quarterback was for the Broncos is, um, they got the, they got the ball. I think we're up by like four. They need to drive the length of the field. And uh, and score a touchdown, and Madden gets a 15-yard penalty when they're way back on their own 20, 25. So now it's like up on the 40. The next play, maybe nothing happens. The next play gets another penalty, another 15 yards, and then they're cut. They're 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 on our side of the 50. They're coming down the field, and the quarterback throws a pass. I pick it off. I run down the sideline, and what I really wanted to do with the ball, I never forget this. I just wanted to smash somebody in the face with the ball. <laughs> a Bronco player. Just bam, here, have that. But I didn't do it. So I ran up the – I ran out of bounds in front of the Bronco bench. Went across the field. No problem. Offense went on. We win the game. So Madden comes up to me on the bus going to the airport. And he looks down at me and he goes, thanks, Phil. And I said, what, Coach? What, what, what? Thanks for what? He goes, you bailed me out today. And I looked up. I, I really didn't get anybody. He goes, I have a boss, too. <laughs> that was the nicest thing John Madden had told, ever said to me up to that point, you know. Yeah, that, that's kind of like and he now like. I'm, a, now I'm earning. I'm earning that my coach could talk to me. Ray yeah, now, Macy, uh, on the other hand, he was my guy, an Italian guy from New Jersey. He talked to me all the time and kept me pumped. And I like I like playing for Ray, you know. Of course, John. Of course, Al. Great, you know. What a what an organization! I walked into the greatest organization in football. It was and everybody in those days. Everybody wanted to be a Raider. Man. Everybody. And I remember Lyle Alzado. We come out of college together, and he went to Yankton. I went to Bowling Green. Both, you know, 
we weren't as small as them, but so we played in the uh, uh, blue and gray game together. And then we played in a college all-star game together. And I go to the Raiders, he goes to the Browns, I mean, to the Broncos. And every time we were in the, with the Broncos, he would grab me after the game, we'd hug each other and, and he'd go, can you get me traded? Can you get me on the Raiders? You know? yeah. Finally, when he was with Cleveland, he brings Al brings him into Oakland, but he sent me to Buffalo the same year, so I never got to be his teammate. Oh, it's unfortunate. When you put when you played in the uh, All Star game, was it a surreal experience for you to play against guys like John Mackey and Tom Maddie, guys that you had watched growing up? It sure was. For me to play against, I mean, my first taste. Now, this wasn't my first taste. We're in a college all-star game, and you know, and two, you have four weeks to practice. Mm -hmm. The second weekend, they put us on the bus. We went and scrimmaged the Bears, and I went up against Mike Ditka. God, <laughs> and that was a war. Yeah. And I'm like, oh my god, I'm not ready for this. I mean, these guys were big and strong and smart, and they they took guys like me, and they they knew, you know, well, and they knew what I was going to do before I knew what I was going to do. Right. Anyway, so uh, I learned a little bit from playing against Dick and the Bears, and then we got we went up against the Baltimore Colts, and uh, yeah, that was a, a good day. When I lined up on John, Ma I mean Tom. Tom uh, well, I'm thinking of Tom Maddy, mm -hmm. but John Mackey. I'm right on his. I'm right in his face. I just, you know, I realized against Dick, uh, they're, they're not going to have any mercy on me. I mean, this is going to be a war. Right. It was, and it was a war every single Sunday I ever played in the NFL. And a couple of times, I remember my during my career, you know, maybe I could, this guy's not so good, right? Maybe I could take off, you know, just get by. Bam, it come out, hit you in the throat. I'm like, uh-oh. Yeah, what happened? Everybody, everybody's good. Yeah. And everybody plays for keeps. And that's the beauty of the NFL, that you know, everybody plays for keeps and, if you if you screw up, you're probably going to get you know screw up once, maybe okay, not twice. Right. With the Raiders, you screw up twice, you're cut. Yeah, well, and and being part of the Raiders too, you guys were a part of so many iconic games of the '70s, right? Like you had the Immaculate Reception game, you had the Sea of Hands, you had the Ghost of the Post, um, the Holy Roller. Um, there were so many great games and Madden personally believed that the ghost of the post game, if that was a Super Bowl, people would think that would be the greatest game of all time. But for you personally, what did you think was the most thrilling of any of them? Well, I kind of, I kind of liked the one against the Dolphins to see a hands game. Well, yeah. that, you know, all of them are big. Yeah. Hey, it's <laughs> I, hard to know, pick one. Yeah. Big. I'm about the immaculate reception. You can't get any bigger than that. Yeah. You know, but I, you know, we had lost, um, I think, two or three AFC championships in a row. And then here comes, here comes the Dolphins. I mean, we only lost two at that time. But we were ready. We were ready to go to the Super Bowl. No, it was probably three. But anyway, um, they come to Oakland. And, you know, when you went to Miami in those days, everybody had the white handkerchiefs. And, mm -hmm. and so they come to Oakland and we got every woman had the black bra, the black underwear, the black, every, everything black, nastiness. And the whole stadium is going wacky. We kick to the toppers. They run the, they run the opening kick off back. <laughs> and 20, 10 seconds later, we're down seven. Nothing. I'm like, what happened? All the air got let out of the Coliseum. It was really, really, it was bad. Anyway, we fought our way back, fought our way back. Kenny throws the, you know, into the end zone, and I couldn't believe it. We we fought so hard to get back in the game. We finally take the lead, but only by uh, two points or something. Mm -hmm. And here comes Greasy, and the and the goalposts are on the goal line, and your premium could kick it a mile. And uh, we played, you know, we we went into a prevent defense. And Don Shinnick, who was my linebacker coach at that time, he said, Phil, look, you, you, your responsibility is you you count one, two. When that quarterback looks a different way, you you go. You know, you don't just stay, you know. So that was a very good tip he gave me. I got a lot of interceptions. But no bigger than had Paul Warfield coming across the field and he probably would have caught the thing probably on the 30. Mm -hmm. And I came back and I and he never saw me coming. And I just 
went for the middle of the field because that's where Greasy was looking. Picked it off, ran down the sideline. I had the ball. They finally tackled me somewhere. I, I went over and gave it to John Madden. And, and I said, Coach, this one's yours. And the reason I did that was because John, we were, he, I, I, I never saw anybody try so hard to put us in the right position to win. He was a great, great coach. And, you know, I'm sure the Dolphins had lost a bunch of games just like we did on our way to winning our first Super Bowl. Sure. So we were paying our dues. But I wanted Coach to have that ball because he beat Don Shula. He beat us at home. And now we're going on to play the Steelers. Right. So it, I gave John the ball. And I, I know I was with him Monday night in spirit. You know, I went up to his, uh, to his, uh, you know, celebration of life up in Oakland Monday night, which was wonderful. And uh, I told that story a few times. That was my gift to John. Yeah. Now, speaking of the Steelers, you were part of one of the most, probably the most famous play in football history with the Immaculate Reception. What was the feeling like on the plane ride back to Oakland after that? Was everyone just kind of dead quiet in disbelief or was everyone furious at what had just happened? Well, you got to remember, Aaron, that, you know, Steelers are as much pros as we are. Right. Right. We're playing, we're playing a game. What's it? 14, 13 or whatever. I mean, seven to six. Seven to six. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, how can you play a better game than seven, six? Those guys were kicking our ass and we were kicking their ass. It was a beautiful game. Snake gets in, runs around the end, goes, gets in there. You know, in football, you got to give pros credit. Look at these, look at these beautiful playoff games. Mm -hmm. And look at the Super Bowl game. Guys are good players, man. You get you get to a championship game like we did with the Steelers, or uh, a you know a Super Bowl game. Anybody at any time can make a play, and they're all as good as you. You know, so it's and and when the Steelers made that play. We didn't even know the rule. I didn't know. I saw Madden was going wacky on the sideline. And I'm like, what's he going wacky about? The guy got a touchdown. Well, it wasn't, you know, offense to offense. Was illegal. I don't think the referees knew that. And then when it bounced off Fuqua. And then did Franco trap the ball? Probably. There was no film. Was there holding on the line of scrimmage? Probably three, three guys were getting held. There was so many things wrong. Did I get clipped? Yes. I wish I would have fell, but I, I tried to keep my balance, and, but Franco was gone. If I fell, we might have got the flag. There were so many crazy things, but you know what? It was beautiful. Yeah. And, 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 and um, that year, that year, uh, I remember um, I was, that was my second year. So Franco's rookie year. And Franco went, became the Italian American uh, player of the year. And I was that the year before in New Jersey. Mm. So my parents, they invited my parents and they invited me, but I was on the West Coast. I, I couldn't get back. But then about my parents went. And my father spoke the same dialect as Franco's mother, Italian. That's not, not right outside. They're both right from Naples. Okay. So they, my mother, I mean, my father and Franco's mother hit it off great that night, talking Italian all night. Franco calls me up and says, Phil, it was unbelievable. Your father, blah, blah, blah. So, and, and, you know, and everybody around the country knows that at 4.07 every December 23rd, I get a phone call from Franco. He wants to know what I'm doing. <laughs> That's good. That, that's good that you guys joke around about that, though. That's a lot uh, of fun. We do. Matter of fact, Aaron, you should put on your calendar next year. Uh, they're going to do something big in Pittsburgh. So Franco called me and said, "Yo, December twenty third, you open?" I said, "Of course." So we'll, we'll do something in Pittsburgh. Fifty years. Yeah, 50 I'll. Years I've been to Pittsburgh quite a few times for games. So yeah, I would love to go at that time. <laughs> 
Now, 1976 is when you guys finally won the Super Bowl after having so many years where you fell just short. What do you think was distinct about that team that season that allowed you guys to go all the way and to be, a, frankly, one of the most dominant teams of ever, like of all time? Yeah, that was a, that was a that that was a very good team, you know. But the team the year before was just as good. Seventy five team seventy seven was just as good, but. In 77, 76, it seemed like everything just fell in place. And one of the most beautiful things that ever fell in place was that whatever was going on with the Bengals and the Steelers, we were playing the Bengals on a Saturday night, and we were already won our division. We were already had home field. We were we ended up 13 and one that year. So we, you know, we had it all. We had home field. And the big talk was, would we lose to the Bengals to knock the Steelers out? <laughs> Similar to this year, what happened with San Diego and the yeah. Raiders, the Raiders, the Wolf Raiders, beat the yeah. uh, Chargers, and, and then uh, oh, Pittsburgh. Almost knocked out Pittsburgh. Yeah. So anyway, we, you know, the, the talk was around town. I remember, like on a Thursday, Madden took – and a couple of extra minutes and pull us all into the meeting room and said, guys, I don't want to hear about this beating the losing to the Bengals. And John went off to one of his crazy rants and he said, we go in the front door. We're kicking down the front door and then we're going to kick the Steelers ass the next week. So we ended up doing just that, beating the Bengals and then beating the Steelers, which was beautiful. We wiped out that Central Division, you know, right. it was a it was a beautiful thing, and you know it. The other night, when in John's, um, you know, his his uh, celebration of life, he they put a lot of clips up on the big boards, you know, and, and d- different things that John really wanted, really were important to him, and that was one of the ones that was really important to him. No, no Raider team, no Raider team is going to lose on purpose ever. You know, I loved, I loved the when he said it on the board the other night, which was pretty cool. Yeah, it just doesn't feel like the Raider way to just throw a game. No, it's not the Raider way at all. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. that's why they the didn't Raider do it. Way at all. Matter of fact, but there are some people on that team that might have said, "I don't want to see the Steelers." <laughs> They're pretty what? good. Competitive rivalry. Do you have time for a couple more questions? Yeah, I do. Cool. The 70s was such an iconic decade. And for so many people who grew up in that period of time, that was their absolute favorite decade for the NFL. And for me, I enjoy that decade a lot, too. Um, How do you like what, what case would you make to say that the 70s was the best decade in the NFL? Well, you know, I I, I want to say I enjoy football in 2022. Yeah, sure. Yeah, I'm in really enjoying football. I liked how football has it's almost like evolution. I right? you know it, it's gotten better and better and better and better. I think the 70s was a good blend of nastiness and football. Mm. Now I don't think there's any nastiness yeah but i think people need you know people want that and there was the rules were so and maybe the guys weren't big enough you know to you know as they are now to to be you know i think the players were big the players were nasty and tough and all that stuff and i think there was a certain element of I said called it nastiness. That is that is gone. I think now the NFL is a little more polished, and I, and I and I really enjoy watching, you know, a passing game. So, I mean, I, I keep thinking our defense could stop these guys. Maybe we can't. I don't know. But it was it's it, it's it's different. But I think the '70s football. And I get so many people that just love '70s football because it was hey, it was more of a Defensive game, right? John Madden. If you could, if you could run the ball and you could play defense, you win a Super Bowl. Well, not so sure. 
you better have a passing game too. But uh, you know, it was just it was just a, a little more uh, physical, I would have to say. Even though people say, you know, the people say, oh, it's a sissy game. No, you don't want to go on there. I, I, you know, anybody who ever says, you know, it's turning into a sissy game or something, they say, oh yeah, you put a helmet on, you try and get off the field alive. Yeah, it is nasty out there, man. It is nasty. But I like, and and John Mann, we're, we're celebrating George Blanda's life, and we're out in Oakland, and we're at a table, and I'm just I'm sitting next to John, and he goes, Phil, what do you think about the new rules, the safety rules? And I said, John, I like them. And he looked at me like, he goes, I didn't expect you to say that. And I said, why? He said, because the you know, way you play. I said, coach, uh, this is what I feel. Somebody's going to die. Somebody's going to die right. if they don't stop. Like when Jack Tatum hit Daryl Stingley, yeah. I grabbed Tate's hand, pulled him up, and this guy didn't move. That's scary. Right. And they had to stop the head to head. How they've done it is amazing. I can't believe some of the calls. They have to stop hitting in the knees. Yeah, man, I got two. I got two fake knees. You know, it, 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 the knees, the neck. You know, the concussion. They're trying. We don't want to lose this game. We want football to be played forever. They had to calm it down a little bit. And I'm all for it. Yeah, it's definitely a balancing act. I miss too how they used to have a lot of nicknames. You know, oh, yeah. I mean, like especially being on the Raiders, you guys had so many nicknames or so many characters with nicknames. I mean, what was yours, Foo? Mine was Fu. Like and, the, uh, uh, Fu Manchu? Yeah, Aaron, I got a hazy IPA right here. I don't know what my eyes look like right now, but I squint, right, when I, when I have a couple of beers. Uh-huh. And uh, Dwayne Benson said, your name's not Phil, your name is Fu. <laughs> and it stuck. The only guys that call me Fu are the guys that play in the NFL. I'm walking to an airport and somebody goes, Fu, I know it's an NFL player, you know. Right. It's really cool. And you know, then you go to a few Pro Bowl games and your name gets bigger and bigger and crazier. Yeah, it gets passed so around. I was Fu. We gotcha. had a, everybody had a nickname. I used to, uh, you know, a lot of them, like, like Jack Tatum, you know, in the book they call him the assassin. Mm-hmm. Do you know what his name was? Reverend, okay. Reverend Abdul. Okay. Now, why he was Reverend Abdul, I have no clue. But everybody called him Reverend, probably because when he hit people, it was so hard. Right. And, ah, Tate was man. Twos. Yeah. Kick him in the head, Ted. Teddy, Teddy Hendricks. In practice, Marv Hubbard was uh, blocking him, and then he was kind of going down his legs. Teddy backed off and kicked him in the head. <laughs> so you got his name, kick him in the head, Ted. You know, ghost to the post, that's easy. You know, snake, that's easy. Yeah. Blinky, Freddie Bolitnikov, Blinky. <laughs> right. I don't know. Just, you know, I'm sure Henrik. I'm sure Hendricks probably liked the uh, kick him in the head, Ted, better than Mad Stork. Oh, yeah, he did. And that was his Raider name. Yeah. But then it ends up being kick him. So if he's in the airport and somebody calls him kick him, he knows he's a Raider. <laughs> right. You know? Yeah, Last a, lot of, a, lot of cool, a lot of cool names. Yeah, most certainly. Last question I have, Phil, is Bill was telling me the story. And Bill, for those who don't know, is the one that graciously connected the two of us. He told me the story about you had given your Super Bowl ring to someone who was in a wheelchair that was trying to walk again. And I was wondering if you could just tell the audience that story, because I think that was a really interesting and a powerful one, too. Well, thank you, Aaron. And, and, it, and it was. And um, I... I, I I start from the beginning, 9-11, mm-hmm. trade centers get hit, right? Yeah. Tuesday. They call off the NFL that weekend. The next weekend, the NFL's back on. I just so happened I took a big suite out in the Oakland, San Diego, quarterback by Flutie is playing uh, Raiders and Gannon. It's going to be a great game. I invite all these customers, right? 30 people or so in, in the suite. Go out there, everybody, you know, Aaron, you probably were very young in those days, but it was, man, it was a time for us all to come together. It was a great feeling. 
The Raiders had a flyover that day. The game, the game ended up like 51-48, some ridiculous thing. That they just went passing back and forth. So I'm in the suite, and I got the knock on the door, and the guy says, uh, hey, Phil, you got to get out of here, man. It's like it's all going on 7 o'clock. The game ended at like 4.30 or something. Right? <laughs> so anyway, we're getting out of here. So we're walking out, and a couple of my buddies said, hey, hey Phil, let's see how popular you are. Can you get us a beer? And no problem. So there's a big group of Raider fans that go over there. Hey, man, we need some beers. And the guy goes, you Phil Villapiano? Yeah, I'm Phil Villapiano. Yeah, come in. Give us all beers. I see you guys sitting in a wheelchair, and he's got two young daughters staying right next to him. And I said, what happened, man? He goes, well, I dove in a pool, and, and, and uh, you know, I got paralyzed. I said, oh. Well, I knew Conrad Dobler, and a lot of people don't know Conrad Dobler's wife fell out the hammock, smashes her head, she's paralyzed. And I knew that story very well. So I said to this guy, and, and, and she told me her name was Joy. Joy told me that she's working out every single day because she can walk again because she didn't sever the spinal cord. You can bruise it and you can go in but if you can work it back, so this is what they said. So anyway, I look at the guy. I said, did you sever your spinal cord? And he goes, no. I go, well, then you can walk again. And he goes, I know that. But I'm raising a family. And, and he knew that, right? And he's sitting in a wheelchair. So I'm like, well, you got these two little daughters, and you're not going to try and walk again? What's the matter with you? What kind of raider are you? He's got his jersey on, all the paint and all that. And a couple, a couple guys are coming over now. I said, you his friend? He's not going to walk again? You, you big guy. His name was John. Big John, we called him. He said, big John, this is your best friend. And and and, and he's not going to walk again because he, he won't, you won't work out like a Raider three times a day. And that's all he had to hear. He goes, I'll do it. I said, John, is he a bullshitter? He goes, no, nah, this guy says he'll do it, he'll do it. I took out my ring. I said, give me your hand. He put out his hand. I slipped the Super Bowl ring on. I said, give this back to me when you could walk. And I told my people, let's go. We start walking away. One of my friends goes, Phil, you should at least get his phone number. I said, go get it. <laughs> I didn't go back. So anyway, my friend went back and got the phone number. And his name is Mitch Ulrich from Pleasanton, California. We started communicating. I started asking him how he's doing, how he's doing. And he kept telling me, I'm three times a day, three times a day, every day. And John, John's his neighbor, came down. It was unbelievable. So I got an uh, invitation for John Madden to come out for the All Madden team. I was going to critique the All Madden players. You know, remember, he was picking an All Star team every year. Right. So I go to Pleasanton, which is where Mitch is. And I said, Coach, I'm going to be, I've got to go do something, but I'll be, I'll be over there at four o'clock or so. So I go to Mitch's house. Mitch, this is what this guy did, which is totally amazing. He put a rod, the length of his garage, mm -hmm. and he got like a harness, and he got a chain, and he and he and he attached it and, and locked it, and just so his feet could touch the ground, just very lightly. And he went up and back. And up, and you know, he couldn't fall because he's on a harness. But if he, his step went this and he swing, so he was trying to show up for me. His first step was wrong and went swing, he swing back. I, what are you doing? This is nuts. I couldn't believe it. And John said, He's okay. John grabbed him, set him up, walk. He, and he would move his feet. He did this, right? I, and I had to leave him. Uh -huh. After that, I, I kissed him goodbye. And I said, you, you're the best. Keep going. And he had my Super Bowl ring on. It was great. So now I go to Reno for the Super Bowl every year at the Silver Legacy Hotel. Conrad Dobler and I are, were the entertainment. Right. And Glenn Carano, who owns the hotel, you know, he's the MC. So. Mitch calls me before the Super Bowl and says, Phil, I want you to come watch me walk. And I said, what? 
you walk, you can walk. I can walk. I said, well, I'm, co- I'm not coming. You're coming to Reno and you're going to do this on stage in front of all the Raider Nation and all this stuff. So by the time we get up there, the story got out. A guy named Dave Newhouse from the Oakland Tribune broke the story. When I didn't have my ring on in Pittsburgh, he said, where is it? And one of my buddies who was with me in Oakland, I mean, in, with me yeah, in Oakland, told the story. And Dave went crazy. Felt I got to print the story. So now it's coming out. I let Dave know this guy's going to walk in Reno. ESPN, NBC, ABC, they all show up. It was nuts. We had this huge press conference. And, and, and Mitch is in a wheelchair. He says, I'm walking. He had a 41 on. He says, I'm walking tomorrow. I'm walking tomorrow. So everybody comes back. It's unbelievable. So Mitch gets up on, we took a couple guys that were with me, pick him up and put him up on stage. He puts those little um, uh, crutches on that go oh. around your wrists, you know, and, and he's standing there kind of shaking. He's on his legs. And I'm like, oh, God. Glenn Carano tells the story the best he can, gives me the microphone. I turn to Mitch and I said, Mitch, you've had my ring for a long time. I want my ring back. Walk to me. And he starts and shakes and shakes. His foot moved. It moved. Wow. And then he shook and shook and shook. The other foot moved. I, meanwhile, I'm about 10 feet away. I'm now coming closer. He goes like this with the crutches and throws them off his hands. And he's going like this. I thought he was going to fall, but he didn't. And he took one more step and dove into my arms. And it was un, unbelievable. Inspirational. I, I did it. And I got my ring back, which was great. Where's my ring? My ring is over there somewhere. But anyway, um, I got my ring back. But the funny thing, my mother's 92 years old. She's watching Good Morning America. Remember, I told you all the studio with them. Yeah. Right there. And the, the lady says, wait till you see what an Oakland Raider did yesterday. My mother's like, Oakland Raider, I got to pay attention. And so <laughs> I never told my mother. So she got, she went, ah, I just fell up. He gave a Super Bowl ring away. Blah, 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 blah. So that was, that was wonderful. She called me up. Fell up. You know, got her cell phone. This was cell phones. Fell up. Ah, I'm crying, but ah, why would you do that? Blah, blah, blah. So my mother was incredible. Listen to this. I get a phone call from Oprah Winfrey. <laughs> Phil, we saw what you did. We want to make you. We want to bring you into the studio and make you most inspiration. We have five inspirational people per year. You were one of them. I said, wonderful. So we go to Chicago. We do the Oakland, we do the Oakland o- Oprah show. Mm-hmm. Oprah gives Mitch a one-year full scholarship to this place called Project Walk in San Diego. I go down to visit Mitch. All uh, race car drivers, uh, rodeo people, everybody who breaks their neck. Uh-huh. They're there, all these guys. And they're going through the shit. And Mitch is like, Mitch is like an accelerated student down there. And these other guys are really bad, you know, because remember, he could walk. So ended up, Mitch is now crutches. And you know, you don't realize that most people don't realize this. Crutches is a lot better than wheelchair. Right. I never thought about that, but he's a great guy. Still, we still communicate and his daughters are now grown up and loving everything that happened and a beautiful, beautiful guy. And you know, that that's the story. That's the Super Bowl ring story. That's inspirational, right? Like some people just need that little bit of motivation to really push themselves beyond their own limits. And I think it says a lot about your character too, that you would give him that incentive in your Super Bowl and your Super Bowl ring. Well, he, he, was, he did it. Aaron, it, it was crazy. But remember, we just had 9-11. Right. Super Bowl ring meant nothing. Yeah. We wanted America. You know, I wish they would have shot Bin Laden in the head that morning. You know, that would be good. Right. <laughs>
Uh, anyway, so it all turned out great, and I'm, I'm very happy it, it did. And uh, hey, I did something that I felt like I had to do. It says a lot about your character, so I'm sure Thank everyone you. appreciates hearing this. Phil, this was a lot of fun. I'm really glad you took the time to come on. I enjoy listening to all of your stories, and uh, I'm sure there's a lot of people here who were around to see you live in person, but thankfully, because of YouTube and stuff, I had a chance to see a lot of your games, and I really enjoy watching those Raider teams, and you especially, man. I'm really glad we had the chance to do this. Thank you, Aaron. It's very nice, and and you call me when you need me, and uh, hey, Raiders, I think we're one or two guys away. Maybe we surprise somebody next year. Maybe we're Cincinnati next year. You think so? I think we're close. Who's the and who's I, I who really, are the one or two guys? I I think I think we need him. Well, we got to We got to get. We got to get maybe a little more speed in the defensive backfield because our guys keep getting hurt back there. True. I'd love to see another pass rusher, but we got. And I think we need to trade for the offensive lineman that has a lot of experience yeah. to lead our young, we got young, big, good guys, but we need, you know, when, when we lost our, our guard this year, the, the maniac, I forgot his name, the Italian guy. Incognito. You know? Yeah. We need an older offensive lineman. Yeah. We need Conrad Dobler to come back out. Yeah. <laughs> wow. You know who I love on that team? Crosby. Oh, what a good player. He's insane. Is and, it, you know, that kid, that kid from Clemson, maybe he's not done yet. He's just, uh, you know, he showed a couple of good moves this year. And then we got the, we got the kid in the trade. Maybe one, one more pass rusher. Cause this, this league is about pass rushing as you see. Yeah. As the, as the Rams won the Super Bowl. I did. Whenever the Raiders moved to Vegas, did you think it was ironic because you grew up, you played at a time whenever Vegas was a no, no. And it was it just ironic to see a franchise in Vegas and especially the Raiders. Well, there no other, no other team could go to Vegas, but the Rams. <laughs> it was the true. perfect, the perfect choice. Um, no, we always a hey, gambling, you know, you know, we weren't allowed to gamble. Nobody was allowed to gamble. Man. But the players aren't still allowed to gamble. So then nothing's changed there. You know, we we, we had the one kid that, that had the car accident. We had the kid with the guns. We yeah. got to get rid of that bad element. And, you know, uh, Vegas, there's going to be a lot of distractions. Right. You got to be very careful about players. Um, I think our new coach, Josh, is, you know, uh, he's probably got a little Belichick in him. You ain't going to mess around with him. Yeah. Uh, I think... I think we're going to be I think we're going to be okay. But no, I love the Raiders in Vegas. Matter of fact, I got I worked for Caesars this year uh, in the, in their suite on the 50 yard line. I was the host. Are you okay. kidding me? All I got to do is drink and talk. I was perfect. <laughs> You're in your element. I'm in my element. Yeah, <laughs> it, was, it was wonderful. I so I'm it. really enjoying Vegas, and I live in Palm Desert. It's at three hours. I'm there. He's, yeah, you know, it's like a second home. I get, I get, I get, matter of fact, I get tired. <laughs> I get, I get, me and my lady, we go, we go over there. Yeah, you know, after the game, we're exhausted. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Me and, uh, anyway, but, I love, I love a Mark Davis built a beautiful stadium. Absolutely beautiful. The most fan friendly stadium in the league. All of Raider Nation should go and check it out. I definitely want to go check it out because. I mean, growing up, like our family vacations were in Vegas when they had like the whole family environment, um, yeah. sort of that, like resorts and casinos and our, or our arcades. But I've been a few times since I turned of age and it's been a blast, but I definitely want to go for a football game now. So that's definitely on my checklist. Maybe next year. You got to. Go to, Vegas, to. go to Vegas and then go to Pittsburgh on the 23rd for the 50th anniversary. Ooh, that's that would, a good one. That would be a trip. Yeah, that, that would be a couple of good weeks. Yeah, well, if you're gonna do this for a living, you got to go to these things, man. That is that's very true. That is very true, Phil. All right, you have given me so much of your time. I don't want to take any more, Phil. Thank you Good again luck. for coming. I got on. people coming over in ten minutes. I have really gonna, appreciate the time. Thank you. Gonna Phil. have another. Did you see my hazy little thing here? This is hazy. a California. That's why they call you Foo. <laughs> I'm about to get mine. Okay, going. Aaron. Bye bye now. Take it easy, Phil. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye.